Welcome to Brother Miller's Notes. I'm so glad you're with me today as we have an introduction to the Book of Mormon. We get to study the Book of Mormon this year, and it's a wonderful thing, but I hope you keep in mind some of the promises that we receive for studying the Book of Mormon. President Russell M. Nelson has given maybe a couple of those promises to us when he said, My dear brothers and sisters, I promise that as you prayerfully study the Book of Mormon every day, you'll make better decisions every day. I promise that as you ponder what you study, the windows of heaven will open, and you will receive answers to your own questions and direction for your own life. I promise that as you daily immerse yourself in the Book of Mormon, you can be immunized against the evils of the day, even the gripping plague of pornography and other mind-numbing addictions. One well, thing, things I think is very helpful as you start your study of the Book of Mormon is to think about what help the Book of Mormon authors determined what they wanted to include in their records. Really, it's the why they're including what they're including. I have a little list for you from the words of the author themselves. What helped them include or determine what they should write in their records? In 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 20, you get the very first chapter. Nephi says, here's one of my purposes, to show unto you the tender mercies of the Lord. And you get the Book of Mormon ending in chapter 10 of Moroni, mentioning the tender mercies as well. They're bookend topics. And maybe there's that idea that Nephi says, I'm going to show you. And at the end, Moroni says, hey, haven't you seen all these tender mercies that the Lord's given? We should keep those in mind as we're praying about the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. That's chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. In verse Nephi 6, 4 through 6, Nephi indicates that one of the purposes is to persuade that everyone can come unto God and be saved. And if we skip to chapter 4 of 2 Nephi, verse 15, it's not just the everyday things, the common things, the things that are cute or nice. It's the things of his soul is what he's including. And some of the more popular uh, quoted verses uh, is, is 2 Nephi chapter 25, verse 26. But 23 and 26 give another purpose. Here's why I'm writing what I'm writing. He says, I write to persuade our children to believe in Christ. But it's not just that, because a couple chapters later, he also indicates it's not just to pers persuade our children to come into Christ, but we're writing, we realize, to all nations of the earth, and that one of our purposes is to help everyone believe in Christ. The great editor Mormon, in Words of Mormon, he wants to indicate, here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying as an editor to include things in this volume, in this book, he says, quote, according to the workings of the Spirit of the Lord. I'm including what the Spirit's telling me to do as I'm editing out this entire volume. In 3 Nephi chapter 16, there is an indication that one of the reasons why is to make sure that Christ's words be kept and be manifested on the Gentiles. we got to record the words of Christ. And in Moroni chapter 1 verse 5, 4, sorry, 1 verse 4, it's at a time at the end of a nation, an end of dreams, and and he realizes this is really going isn't going to go to my children, but this is going to going to go to the world, and I want it to go and have things of worth unto my brethren. Okay, we've got the whole nation, and, and even it's going to go for any of my well distant relatives, Lamanites, whoever it is. I want this to go forth. Now, the one that's not really in order, but I want to conclude with this one is Mormon chapter eight verses 35 to 38. There's an indication that Jesus Christ has shown me, shown you unto me, and I know your doings. What helps Mormon as an editor is to realize what we're, a little bit of what we're going through. He's shown what's happening, and he's trying to determine by the Spirit what to include that would help us in our day. I want to include one last message of the why we have the Book of Mormon. And the last message, the last words written on the Book of Mormon were not Moroni chapter 10. It was actually, well, here in the words of Joseph Smith, he said, the title page of the Book of Mormon is a literal translation taken from the very last leaf on the left-hand side of the Book of Plates, which contain the record which has been translated and, said title page, is not by any means a modern composition, either of mine or of any other man who's lived or does live in this in this generation. So maybe the last words written, and here's the, the title page, and it gives the second paragraph, reasons why 
we have the Book of Mormon. And so I'm just going to highlight it as I, as I read through this second paragraph. The Book of Mormon is an abridgment, includes the abridgment, Book of Ether also, which is a record of people, Jared, who were scattered at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people when they're building a tower to get to heaven, which is, and he says, okay, here's why, reasons why we have the Book of Mormon, to show. And there's a list, six things that he's going to show us. One, there are great things, great things the Lord's done for the people in this book, for, for our, our mothers and our fathers. So it's a reminder, here's some great things that have happened. Okay, and kind of a second thing, that you, you know the covenants of the Lord. Okay, one, here's some great things, and here's covenants, the agreements that, that, that God will make with us. And as a part of that is that, that we're not without hope. We're not going to be cast off forever. There is hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Another one of the principles, or one of the purposes, is to convince everybody, Gentile, Jew, that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, one of the main purposes of the Book of Mormon, that he really is, and I like it that it's not past tense, it's not manifested himself to all nations, but it's a current, manifesting. There's an active part where Jesus Christ is has his hand in the lives of or all of us, and we can see it. And we can know that this gospel is true and, and come closer to him. That manifesting, present tense. Um, and then he ends up, if there's anything wrong with this book, it's, hey, it's my fault. It's not Christ's fault. What I'm writing is true. Please forgive me if I make a mistake. I think it's not just their why. Why they chose to write and include what they included. But our Why? Why is it that we are studying the Book of Mormon? Is it that we want to be further convinced of that Jesus is the Christ? That we can be reminded of all the kindness, of the tender mercies that God's given, reminded of the covenants? But as we study the Book of Mormon this year, you may just think about your why. What do you want to get out of the Book of Mormon this year? How can you look at it and say, maybe here's my purpose? And as you make your goal of your, of your study this year of the Book of Mormon, maybe think, Here's why I'm studying the Book of Mormon this year. And have that as a reminder. Maybe put it on your, your uh, fridge or uh, mirror in the bathroom. Here's why. Here's my goal for studying the Book of Mormon this year. President Ezra Taft Benson, in one of his classic uh, talks on the Book of Mormon, said, If they, now these are the authors of the Book of Mormon, saw our day and chose those things which would be of greatest worth to us, is not that how we should study the Book of Mormon? We should constantly ask ourselves, why did the Lord inspire Mormon, or Moroni, or Alma, to include that in his record? What lessons can I learn from that to help me live in this day and age? Now, I just wanted to give a thought on the testimonies in the Book of Mormon. In the original 1830 edition of the Book of Mormon, uh, the testimonies of the three and eight witnesses were not at the beginning. And I really like that. You had Joseph Smith's introduction, then you had the Book of Mormon, and at the very end, you had, and this is a picture of an 18 uh, original edition of the Book of Mormon, uh, and you can see from the from the book, from the photo, it's at the very end. I like that. You know, here's an introduction, here's the actual book, Moroni 10, 3 through 5, a encouragement to get your testimony, and then here's a testimony of three witnesses and eight witnesses. I think that's just kind of cool. In our edition, they've been moved to the front. You have the testimony of the three witnesses, which, as I read it, and as I read it again this morning, it is so much of a spiritual witness. They hear the voice of, the, of God. They're shown this by an angel. They talk about, we testify, we declare, we know. It's very much a spiritual. And you get the testimony of the eight witnesses, which I don't doubt that they felt the Spirit too, but it's uh, the angel didn't show them. It was Joseph. We, we felt this these plates. It feels old. It looks old. We declare it's old. We know what we saw, and we know it's true. So there's also that little bit of element of we have a testimony uh, that we know it's true, but it's also it's hard. It's physical evidence. You also have the testimony of, jo of Joseph Smith, which is a background to a testimony. But once again, 
I, I love the idea. You got three, and then you got eight. There's 11. You got Joseph. There's 12. I like that idea of a of a quorum of a of a testimony, a completion of a testimony, a, a testimony with power. But really, it doesn't matter if they know it. It's do we know it? We can know the Book of Mormon's true. We can know it as we read it. I love going back to that talk from President Ezra Taft Benson. The major mission of the Book of Mormon, as recorded on its title page, is to the convincing the Jew and Gentile that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God, manifesting himself unto all nations. The honest seeker of tr after truth can gain the testimony that Jesus is the Christ as he prayerfully ponders the inspired words of the Book of Mormon. And, you know, the, one of the things that, if I'm teaching this, and sometimes I'm going to include teaching tips as long because I just, something I love to do, it's fun to talk about testimonies. What are you going to do that's going to help your testimony as you're inducing the Book of Mormon? And just think, okay, how am I going to strengthen my, my testimony this year as I study the Book of Mormon? It's also one of those questions you could ask at the beginning, how has the Book of Mormon helped convince you that Jesus is the Christ? Because a lot of times, for me, as teaching teenagers, in a class, I'll have some kids that have read the Book of Mormon two or three times. I asked one of my classes uh, a couple days ago, well, how many times you read the Book of Mormon? Uh, how many you read it five or more times? I had a couple of them that read it four or five times. And I had about third to half the class that have never read it. So it may be one of those times where people who have read the Book of Mormon, or if you're with adults, they can give you a lot of answers on this one. And I want to conclude one other thing that's in the introductory materials. Uh, in teaching youth, I'll talk to them, and I'll show them a picture of an arch like this and talk to them about what a keystone is. And you've seen arches like this. Here's this this are, are this stone right here is the keystone. It distributes weight to the left side and the right side of an arch. And that's why you go to so many of these ancient sites or see pictures of them. And the rest of the building's uh, destroyed, but the arch still remains because it's distributed the weight pretty evenly. Well, Joseph Smith said this classic statement about the Book of Mormon. I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion. And a man will get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than by any other book. And it's just fun to talk about how the Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. Going back once again to President Benson, who gives three reasons why or how the Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. He taught, there are three ways in which the Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. It's the keystone of our witness of Christ. It is the keystone of our doctrine. It is the keystone of testimony. Hey, I'd invite you this week as you study the Book of Mormon, maybe you can consider sharing one of three things with a friend. One of the reasons that you like of why the authors include what they included in the Book of Mormon. Maybe you can include, tell a friend your why. Why are you studying the Book of Mormon this year? And your testimony of Jesus the Christ. Now, a couple notes. Uh, just I'm always interested in your thoughts, or thoughts comments, and suggestions. Um, in one of my YouTube videos, just want to do a shout out. I had one of my former students just make a note and a compliment. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So if you want to make a note on the YouTube, uh, if you're subscribed, great. That'd be great. I think off the left here, I've got the, hey, here's another video you can look at. and Or here is uh, subscribe if you'd like to. You're also welcome to reach out to me on my Brother Miller's Notes Twitter handle. That's at bro, bro Miller's Notes. At Bro Miller's Notes. Just starting that up. So thanks. If you want uh, to work ahead, these, are, these videos are coming out the week before. We do the Come Follow Me curriculum. But if you want to be ahead, if you're a teacher and want some notes from four years ago, all of my videos and all the quotes are available at brothermiller.org. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me with Brother Miller's Notes. Have a great day. Keep smiling.